outside. Keep them coming and we love them. You can join the conversation using the hashtag TordaZwift. We want to see your pain faces. Also, you can join the chat on this stream. We'll be checking it as it happens. If you've got any questions, well, you can ask them to me if you want, but I don't know if I'll answer them. But this person here may be answering your questions, so make sure you let us know during the stream. Now, last time out, the men took on Bologna. It certainly delivered an explosive race. It was an amazing race. It was. It was absolutely brutal and a real show of mental strength as well as obviously physical strength itself on this climb. Not one, but two times up. Absolutely brutal. And riders were in ones and twos, small groups, and it really was such a tough, tough course. Hence why I haven't done it myself yet. <laughs> I, I have raced this course. I raced it yesterday, which is why I'm glassy-eyed today. It was brutal. <laughs> Whoever at Zwift thought it was a good idea not to do that climb just once, but twice, um, by the time I went up the second time, imagine every swear word you've ever heard in the history of your life. <laughs> I Compile know. them together and then say them at the same time. That's what happened. Now, I actually recorded that into, the, into a video, <laughs> which has been deemed by Swift. It doesn't pass, even though we bleeped it out, still doesn't pass the community guidelines. So if you want to see that video, oh I shall stick it on my Instagram. <laughs> And you know when I did all the swearing after the race, yep. my wife came in and went, what are you doing? She came into the pain <laughs> cave and I was like, oh, I was just recording this. She went, my parents are outside. Oh, no. <laughs> Heard it all. Heard Terrible. it all. Now, coming up in a matter of minutes, the elite women are going to be showing us how it's done on the New York race course, which we're very excited about. Warming up. You must have been coming through where you did through the Olympic program. You must have been great at warming up because you had to warm up before every race. Yeah, we had a super strict procedure with warming up. So we knew exactly what we had to do. And like these girls tonight, I'm sure they'll be doing some pretty hard efforts before they race to get their bodies used to exactly what they're going to be putting it themselves through in the race. How long was your warm up? It was about 30 minutes. 30 minutes of a warm up? Yeah, because oh, the race was so short as well. Yeah. You had to be super, super warm. Wow. Um, I'm sure these girls will be doing the same tonight with such a short race. Which they are doing right now. Uh, Olivia Barrel, Team Turbo, I believe. We can see her on the turbo right now. She's getting up to speed, ready to go. If her nickname's not Roll Out the Barrel, <laughs> then I don't know whether she's uh, thinking there. We've also, oh, that's the only one we've got of the feeds right now. Because the thing is, though, we're asking people to show us their feeds, but it's a panic before a race, isn't it? Making sure you've got everything. Yeah, definitely. Like you, couldn't find your shoes. I couldn't find one <laughs> shoe. I couldn't find a shoe. I'm always missing a shoe or my heart rate strap, which has been left somewhere in the you house. You have to be super organised, especially for these races where the warm-up makes such a difference. Make sure you've got your drink ready, you've got your fan on, you've had your caffeine gel, and you've had a good warm-up and raring to go. Indeed. Now, don't drink coffee. Just a quick pro tip. Don't drink coffee on the turbo, which I did That was the race, the race we did. Because I threw it all <laughs> over the wall getting overexcited. Anyway, we are looking forward to the next Tour de Zwift stage. We're entering New York as usual. Before we actually, Matt Stevens is going to be here in a second. Can you introduce him in your best New York accent? Here we go. I'm ready for oh this. Oh, no. Go on, go for it. New York. <laughs> Matt Stevens. Here he is. <laughs> Stage five is here and we're heading to the Big Apple. Zwift's NYC is not the NYC of today, although it will look familiar to locals. Set 100 years in the future, the course contains many futuristic elements, including elevated transparent roadways, flying cars, and sleek sci-fi buildings in the skyline. New York's Everything Bagel is the longest route on the NYC course, and it's the perfect route for a hard one-hour effort. If you're looking for a tough challenge, the A Group is the one for you. The B Group and the runners will be on New York's Park Perimeter Loop that takes you on the outermost ground level path around Central Park. The course's rolling profile is rarely flat or straight and contains a few difficult punchy pitches including Harlem Hill to the north. The C Group for the women will be taking on the Knickerbocker. On ground level this course is rolling, curvy and scenic, allowing riders to enjoy the classic sights of Central Park. But don't get too comfortable, as Zwift has thrown in the forward KOM into this idyllic setting. Get ready to push up gradients that top out at 17%. The races for this stage will be taking on the Gotham Grind Reverse. This is a figure eight route which stays on the ground level roads of the lower and middle Central Park loops. It avoids the upper loop and thus Harlem Hill, giving this route a rolling profile with no substantial climbs. The lower ground level loop includes a sprint section, making this route ideal for events which include sprint efforts. Take your own bite out of the Big Apple, then grab a bagel when you're done. You'll deserve it. 
get yourself a bagel. If Bologna was all about beautiful climbs and woods and hills and being out in the countryside, New York is totally different. But what a world it is. It is. It's amazing. It's fast and furious. And I love it. I went to Central Park, actually, and it's just so similar riding around the course. That's why I love riding it on Zwift as well. And tonight it's going to be super exciting, much like the London Classic course at the beginning of the Tour of Zwift. Which so was super fast, wasn't it? It was. It did split up more than I thought, actually. So I think we will be in for some, you know, gap tonight but I think it will come down to a big bunch sprint. We are T-minus seven minutes away from the start of this race. There will be tactics it is a team race we'll get into in a second but sprinting and attacking as Danny just said are going to be crucial factors in your performance on stage five of the Tour de Zwift. So let us get a slice of advice from a couple of familiar faces. Mm. Powerhouse couple Matt and Danny Rowe, well, they churn out enough watts to heat a small, compact home when they both saddle up in Zwift. Danny's an Olympic champion, three times world champion, but above all, she married me. <laughs> <laughs> Matt is a former junior European track champion. He is also the brother of Luke Rowe, who you might know from the Tour de France. And Matt is also the key component to our coaching company, Rowan King. Rowan King run loads of rides in Zwift, and they've also got a race team. So let's get tips for the racers. Danny, well, as you would guess, she's the sprint specialist, and Matt, the attack expert. The best power up is the aero helmet. It's super powerful. If you get this, save it for the final sprint, because that's where most Zwift races are won or lost. The best time to attack is when you're tired. It sounds a bit counterintuitive, but when you're tired, chances are your rivals are too. And this is when your attack stands the best chance of success. Like I said, it's often all about the sprint in Zwift races. So as it's winding up, position yourself in the middle of the pack so you get the best draft and the finish line is nearer than if you're at the back. Watch and wait. You want to unleash max power for as short time as possible. My favourite power-up is the invisibility. This makes my avatar vanish in my rival's eyes for 10 seconds. And that's enough to get a gap. When I become visible again, I've taken them by surprise. And if you keep your initial effort moderate, after 10 seconds you can kick again, and that could be enough to get a decent gap and stay away to the finish. Well, we've just heard that Danny reckons she can drop Matt in a heartbeat. Let's see if that's true. <laughs> that face at the end <laughs> says it all. Gutted. I love how competitive you still are. I know, I really am so competitive with everything that I do. It's Poor a, Matt. It's a lovely set you've got there as well. Have you raced each other before? We actually haven't on Zwift. So outside, you know, we'll have a few sprint races and things like that. Actually, in real life, we've done some races on the road together. Um, but that was our first time on Who Zwift. Won? Who won on the road? Um, probably Matt, to be honest. <laughs> I'll give that to him. Um, <laughs> the thing is, though, if I was taking his tip there. So when you're knackered, you attack again. Serious. I mean, because if this is wrong, Matt, I'll be sliding your DMs just to show you my face when I'm upset about this. Well, to be honest, yeah. If everyone, you know, everyone's going to be tired at that stage. So for you attacking, everyone's going to think, wow, okay. that's incredible. Not want to actually chase back. If everyone's fresh, if you attack, you're just going to get chased down straight away. Danny, I'm going to take this as a tip. I'm going to tempt it when <laughs> I race it. this course. Well, uh, let's take a look at this race, Danny. Let's take a look at how it happens. So we have two laps of the Gotham Grind Reverse course, and th this is a team-based competition. So points are scored for two intermediate sprints and at the finish line. So there are three opportunities to grab points for your team, and the team with the most points will win, not the individual riders. And as we've already said tonight, it's going to be a fast and furious course. There's some few lumps in it, so riders will have to be attentive so they don't get gapped. I think it's going to come down to a sprint. Yep. They're going to need to use those power-ups. Indeed, the tactics. It's going to be all about the tactics again tonight, especially as we've seen how they're doing it. You said it's a team race. Let's take a look at the teams taking part. Uh, I mean, the team to be is the Danish bike riders, DBR. 
it, they really are, you know, they've been so, so dominant in this series so far, winning every round. They know how to race, they know how to race together. They've been great in the intermediates and in the overalls. But Canyon ZCC and Vision are hot on their heels, so everyone is going to be out there to win. There's still lots to play for. Let's take a look at the riders to watch. Now, we've got some names here. Lewis Huback has been amazing. Uh, also, Dania Estrate. But you have a hot tip who's not on there. I do. My outsider tonight is Rebecca Wysak. She's an Australian rider. She's been two-time world champion in the individual pursuit, but also recently has been the Australian Criterium champion, so is a super sprinter. So I think this course will suit her down to the ground, and she's my pick for tonight. That is a skill set. Individual pursuit and a crit champion. Crazy skill set. I know, it is amazing. You need really high power for the individual pursuit, but she's super, super powerful. I know she can put out and big watts. smart watts. as well. And if you're going to be smart tonight, you need to have your power-ups ready to go. These are the power-ups that are going to be in there. Aero, Danny talked about earlier on. For me, it's invisibility, which Matt talked about. Because if you can, especially on a course like this, if you can go invisible for 10 seconds, gap them, people aren't going to get back to you. Exactly. And people don't want to chase either once no. you've got that gap. If they think they're looking at other riders to chase. So if you use the invisibility at the right time, that can also be very dangerous. All right, then. Are you ready for the race? I'm ready. All right, then. It's time for the race to start. Um, not just Nathan Guerra. We also have Matt Stevens kick things off. It is New York. Remember, the race you're about to see, you'll be able to race it and ride it and run it in just a few hours' time. But for stage five, it's time to get in. New York. Nathan, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Danny and OJ. Appreciate the pre-show. It's been absolutely awesome. Shows having the run in back story. Nathan Garrett here. I've got Matt Stevens. Matt, we've got 50 seconds to go to the start of the race. Number four, Gotham Grinder. What are we looking at here for their start, you think? Yeah, it's going to be a super fast start without a shadow of a doubt. I hope, as we discussed earlier on, as we heard the uh, our studio discussing Warm-up is absolutely crucial, but it's a flat course, but not totally flat. It's one of the flatter courses, but it's gently undulating. The two significant little climbs, that's there. There's a little drag to the finish, which is called Cat's Paw Hill. We'll definitely see the riders clawing each other as they ride up there and up the west side climb as well. Um, a very, very interesting fast course. No big climbs to split things up, but plenty of little launch pads of which to kind of mix things up. Launch pads for attacks. But of course, the key thing here, Nathan, is it's a team race. And that will provide us with a different set of tactics. And it will be very interesting to see how this race unfolds today. But as I said before, fast and furious. And the racing is getting underway here and is going to be fast and furious right from the get-go, as it usually is can see here toward the back already some of the dbr riders now this was some of the favorites we've been talking about dbr the danish bike riders team has been extremely strong in these races so far absolutely dominating no wonder that they have been with the national champions that they do have on that team they've been loaded up biggie whitelaw louise hubach cecilia hansen all on that team so definitely going to be watching out for the dbr team now we are following one of the velocity vixen riders here it looks like as they move their way forward now there is a very fast downhill here they're about to be entering into before the first climb and this is always a dangerous section these downhills because of the kind of speeds that the pack can get up to if there's a little bit of hesitation to grab a wheel early on some of these riders can find themselves quickly off the back mat yeah, definitely. It's uh, so crucial that they uh, have that warm-up, that quick warm-up, make sure they don't get detached. But we've got a nice field here, but if you can get dialed in at the start, get into the pack, save as much energy as you can because that is absolutely crucial and as you can see we've got so a lot of power being kicked out at the moment still this race hasn't settled down it probably won't settle down for about 1500 meters and then we'll see a little bit of easing and that will provide opportunities for riders then to launch of course this is one of these long little drags that we have on the course this is the the stats of the canadian olivia barrel of Team Turbo. Look at that, still 4.5 watts a kilo, 250 watts. A little bit of a nudge off the front here, and we're not even through our first kilometer of this race. We've expected it to be very, very aggressive, Nathan, and this is exceptionally fast. Yeah, Team Turbo, long-standing team from the world of Zwift Racing. Great to see them 
very well represented in the race here. Living in a barrel here, Team Turbo, as you said, coming out of Canada. She looks to have, looks like 57, uh, 56 kilograms. FTP at 225 here. Eight races out on Zwifter, level 29. Zwifter has a good little uphill sprint, 9.52 watts per kilogram. I'd be watching for her on those, that sharp actual sprint toward the, toward the, uh, intermediate sprint as well as the finish banner she may be one to be watching out for olivia uh as an outside favorite we'll have to wait and see but you know there is the reality though cecilia uh hansen definitely the swedish riser always been extremely strong in the sprints there she can kick up until 11 12 watts per kilogram for those sharp kicks and that's really what it's going to be up to i think now you can see the suffering look at the focus on the face here just looking down at focused on the power here most likely really just trying to hold in with the speed definitely holding the front end of the pack though here borrow here well positioned currently sitting in first place really leading things out this may be a little we had talked about this the team tactics and really trying to make sure they put the hurt in the legs perhaps olivia here was given some team orders to make things difficult for a little while yeah, definitely. That was a very long turn in the front. You saw her cadence was very high, around, around about 96 RPM. But the significant thing for me wasn't just the power, it was the heart rate. She was riding at 196 beats a minute, which I know everybody's got a different heart rate. There's different levels. That is exceptionally high. That is well into zone, zone four and zone five. And that's what we said, Nathan, at the start here. There's going to be a lot of team tactics come into play. Remember, it's a team race. To remind people that have just tuned in or are watching, that are intrigued about what they're seeing on unfold there are 10 points on offer down to one point twice so through the sprint time there'll be 10 points for your team maximum and then of course across the finish line the final climb up cat's poor hill there are 20 points on offer and quite simply the team that amasses the most points will be the winning team and again look at this big what's been thrown down on this next little drag here 286 watts five watts a kilo 74 rpm slightly lower cadence as she leans on these pedals yeah, we are seeing Rosemary Bradbury here, the reigning UK national champion. Now 4.3 watts per kilogram coming from her as she looks to really set things up for the first sprint in just a moment here. There, as you can see, in, uh, they're taking on a little bit of a climb here. This is going to be a little bit of a two-tier climbing here. There'll be two bumps through and there'll be a downhill and then it'll be a sprint into the first intermediate here. So we're a little over, I think, 2K out to go to the first sprint at this point. 15.2 kilometers and you can see on the screen there. You can see the current time as well as laps to go up at the top of the screen as well as the total that has been traveled. Luis Hubach, one of the strongest sprinters we know of, uh, riding for that DBR team. Just setting herself up well, looks like on the right-hand side of the pack there. Making sure she doesn't find herself too far back in the pack. Definitely going to be wanting to sit around that top 10 or so if she's going to be looking for these sprints. And they were very dominant in the second round of the Tour de Zwift, grabbing a lot of those intermediate sprints and absolutely walked away in the standings. I think well over 80 points winning the team competition it looks like they're setting up to do exactly that in this sprint here matt indeed well uh, of course in london they won they got 102 points and they even scored more points than in the watopia 119 points they really are bossing things at the moment but could see that little power spike as back just moved up the outside making sure that she keeps in position of course there are little investments in putting a bit of power through to make sure you're in a very good position it's okay saving energy further down the pack and in the middle of the bunch but you don't want to be too far back as you said Nathan so little power spikes as they move up this is another little bit of a drag before they drop back down remember the intermediate sprint is very very fast indeed in fact it's ever so slightly downhill then there's a slingshot and that little drag to the line now, this is definitely heating up toward the front here. A little bit of a kick here. There's that second bump, and it's put some hurt on. There is a break happening here at this point. The main peloton is starting to walk away. A few of the riders, though, were not paying attention, it seems like here. I am seeing a Nielsen from the DBR Compson here as well from AHDR. Uh, Coker off the back here. Paul is K. Paul as well as Carlson from Team Sweden. It looks like there is definitely a group falling off the back at this point. 57 riders, though, it looks like 50, excuse me, 56 perhaps that have made this front group at this point. Right around 50 riders still involved here but definitely the pace has obviously been so incredibly high even on this course that isn't doesn't necessarily have a whole lot of ups and downs those little bumps have put a hurt into a few of the legs that are falling off the back already 
Yeah, definitely. All you've got to do is put in a, you know, a little 10 or 15 second acceleration in. I must admit, when I ride this course, this is one of my favorite courses on Zwift to ride. I find it a really good workout because you're constantly chopping and changing. Even though Watopia, for example, has got bigger climbs, it's also got flat sections where there's a real opportunity to rest up. But you've got to keep focusing here. You don't want to drift too far back. Even when you're sat in up these little climbs, Nathan, you've still got to lay on the power. So what you end up seeing in terms of your power file when you look at that at the end is a real staccato sort of race so it's fast but it's also up and down these little micro efforts and you've got to try and manage them as best you can but we've still got a lot of riders in this front group currently jostling for position 5.3 k uh, 38 k's are already down and now we're about to head into a little bit of a climb. It's going to be very sharp here in just a moment. Living the bar, we've got the, the real life shot here again. We're going to see what this feels like to try and hold on to the pack. And then it's going to be a downhill into the first intermediate sprint section right now. You can see the heart rate rising here. 193 beats per minute. Obviously, extremely difficult. Don't come from vision here. Not big with their front. It's going to be DBR as well. It's trying to take over Gardner now. Levine there. Pamela Levine, 4.1 watts per kilogram. Nobody really opening up too much of a sprint just yet. Looking to really get set up here for the attacks into that section. A little bit of a downhill here. we got a couple of more bumps. Left hand turn, it looks like. and oh, Excuse me, right hand turn here into this next section of the course. We're going to get an update here in just a moment. How soon? It looks like Fox actually giving a go here. Seven walks per kilogram. Kicking now, it looks like, off the front. And this is the first go for the riders here as they look to try and take over this sprint section. Bow's going. Neil on it looks like here. Rachel Elliott starting to come through as well. Well, DBR just taking over as Turbo looks to grab onto the wheels here as we wait for that first sprint banner. Well, this is a little breakaway that's formed before, ahead of this uh, first sprint battle. Remember, the actual sprint and finish are pretty close together, which is exceptionally cruel. But after that little bit of a climb, an opportunity to break away, but the other riders are exceptionally equal to it. It's Barrel who's still leading. Just look at the powers here. Elliot, 5.8 watts a kilo, making sure she stays in the mix here. And this is this little downhill drag, and it won't be long before we actually see the uh, archway for the first intermediate sprint. Remember, 10 points on offer all the way down to 10th position and these teams now thinking about what they're going to do what tactics are they going to are they going to employ communication as we said before nathan absolutely crucial there has to be a plan it'll be interesting to see how this unfolds in the next few hundred meters it's very interesting to watch, actually, as all the teams really are starting to trade spots toward the front here. I've seen the KRT took over for a second. Then I see Team Turbo kind of making their way to the front here. Each team really trying to fight for the front. It's so interesting to see how this works out amongst the Zwift racers. It's really all about the timing, about when your team starts leading things out. Now, Leah Thorvalson here from Team Turbo, we see a lot of purple and black on the front of this pack now. Now, opening it up, it's going to be Bow here. The one who is completely in control early on is kicking with 12 watts per kilogram here. Livia going from way out, actually. We can't even see the banner yet. It's around the corner still. Malou here from Team Fearless looks to come across, but Barrel here now still trying to hold on. But no, Malou, Team Fearless here, Norway, trying to come across. Gets across here, and maybe these two could work together before they hit the sprint banner, but no. Bradbury here, the pure sprinter from Team Turbo, following up after her teammate there, looking to try and capitalize on the effort here, but Cecilia Hansen, we said she was a favorite for the sprints. 9.7, 10 watts per kilogram coming from Celia over the top of Rosemary Bradbury. Will Mary Wilkins to get the upset here? But here comes Hubach. Hubach. It might have been Hubach at the line. DBR looked to go one, two, perhaps. Mary, where scary Mary across the line, perhaps in third as we wait for those sprint points to come through. Wow, some of the power there was absolutely insane. And to see that rider go long as well, you can see when you look at the kind of quality of the riders, there is the confirmation, Nathan. It was Hubak who took it. Of course, she was the winner of the Watopia Hilly Circuit. She won the overall race. She's taken the sprint points here. No quarter has been given at all. Hubak from Hansen and Mary Wilkinson in third place. What a sprint that was. Another one of those to come and then the finish. And the actual finish line will be crossed very, very shortly indeed because remember, Remember, each circuit only 9.2 Ks around. These riders have got to recover. Remember, for the finish, Nathan, it's going to be fascinating, that final lap. 
Yeah, and we do see the riders here maybe trying to take advantage of the heart rate spiking here from that sprint section. That where They continued on a little bit for the attacks, but it looks like they backed right on, on right off here. Now, as we do see, Leah Thorvaldson turbo now going over the top. There is a little bit of an invisibility power up being used here. Interesting to see. I think that's mainly just to grab the lap banner and a new power up. DBR taking down 25 points. That is a huge result. Turbo there still sticking in. Nine points in Canon ZCC. That's your top three. Vision hanging out right underneath there. One point off, and then it's going to be Race 3R as well as Fearless on the board. BRT, Revo, Rowan King in 2020. Still not on the board. Need to grab a few points through that next intermediate sprint section. Lots of power is being thrown down here. Matt, this is one of the sections they can grab one as they go on through this lap here. Indeed. Well, this is the little climb of uh, Cat's Poor Hill. They will get the bell when they go, go through here. No points on offer, of course. They have eased off very, very slightly. But when I say eased off, those oh, big accelerations have actually Look split the bunch. There, Matt. There's about 25 riders in that front group. Those massive accelerations to go for the hotspot points. Those 10 points have split the bunch. Will, is this going to be a sprint that's going to stick or a split, should I say, that's going to stick, Nathan? Because this is a real elite group that are now moving clear. Yeah, and we do have this section right here where they could try and keep this gap now. If this group that's chasing is not motivated, they will continue to walk away. This little 1% uphill grade is going to be coming at them in just a moment here. There it is. Now we're starting to head into a little bit of a gradient now. And if they continue on, 41 kilometers per hour, Claudia Baring, Canyon ZCC, sitting on the back of the group, 13 seconds, 14 seconds. C. Nielsen, Nelson, excuse me, from 2020, trying to do the work that she can, but they're only, they're only going along at about 37 kilometers per hour currently. So this group that is up ahead, this breakaway group, they've got about 12 seconds and it's got 18 riders from what I can see. 2020 still involved. Vision is in there with two riders from what I can see. Shayna Paulus, the only rider though, still left from that 2020 group. Rowan King still in there with Rihanna Norton, it looks like there. Uh, and then Canyon ZCC, Claudia Barry, Mary Wilkinson, two riders there still involved. So definitely splitting things up here and it looks like the favorites are still going to be DBR with Luis Hubach uh, as well as Vicky White and Cecilia Hansen. Those are the three riders as well as actually Maria Horace from DBR as well. This is a really, really good group. They're working pretty well together. If they keep this going, again, it's all about permutations here, Nathan. Remember, this is a team, a team race. And that means if it's not the right sort of combination, if there's some strong riders that have been left behind, there'll be a willingness to try and bring this back. But this looks like a very, very strong group indeed that are moving cleared out. Remember, only eight kilometers to go in this race. That real big power spike just being too much for many of those riders. Look at the stats here of Gen Real of Team Fiat, 164 watts, 93 RPM, 179 BPM. That's about zone three. She's backing off just a little bit here. Got Leah Torvalson, happy to ride near the front. Remember, a former Swift Academy winner and is really back in the game, riding exceptionally well. This is a very, very good group to go uh, clear now. I'm wondering what sort of communication is going to be happening between these riders. Will they have comms on? Will they be WhatsApping each other? That is the thing for me that's absolutely fascinating with the way that we're running at these races. Yeah, and then we definitely have heard a lot of you have DSs that are hanging out in the Discord channels. There are they're setting up their own Discord channels, set up their own team communications, like kind of like a team car with the radio, and they're in the ears, telling them what's happening, when to make the moves, how to make the moves, and seeing exactly what's happening amongst the riders, clicking around a little bit, knowing what they're up to. Very cool to see how much of there is a community of racers uh, and teams really starting to get the organization and use those tactics. Now, at the front end of the race, still Vicky Whitelaw takes Taking over at the front, it looks like. 3.4 watts per kilometer. Rachel Elliott's still in there. The pure ruler, definitely a strong time trialist. Maybe not watching out for her in a sprint situation, but with KRT, it looks like still involved with, I'm looking through here, it looks like KRT have maybe just the solo rider, actually, that is Rachel Elliott. So that is the one hope it looks like for KISS Racing Team. Going to be able to grab at least a few points as it is awarded to the top 25, I believe it is. So we'll have to wait and see how she ends up in a sprint situation. Don't want to ever count her out. Out, though she's such an incredibly strong rider definitely always won the challenge if she tries to give it a go with such a short course though it can be very difficult to try and break away for anybody that's more of a tt specialist 
Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it is uh, it's one of those courses that's very, very hard to stay away. What we'd need is a little group. I think it's one of those courses that suits the pure power riders. You're going to have to be exceptionally strong to stay clear. But this group, Nathan, talking about staying clear, we saw that split. They opened up a nice little gap. It looks as if this race is going to be between this group out in front. Team Turbo, very, very well represented, but dominating the race so far, as they have for the last two rounds. They've won the team classification both in London and in Watopia is team DBR. And a little bit of a power up being used on this climb here. That of course is key. Could just see around the corner, Nathan, the group coming into focus. They aren't out of this yet. No, it's only 12 seconds actually. It is being led out by C Watts here, it looks like, as well as uh, a few others involved in chase group they've definitely not given up the ghost just yet as they make their way over this little bit of a climb and they've still got him within sight we do see a little bit of kick from vicky whitelaw a moment ago again at about 8.7 watts per kilogram for just a moment gardner we are seeing has made this front group now coming through it's gonna be 2020 it looks like with shana paulus i believe gardner krt now it does look like we have moved to the back of the pack here on the right hand side i have a feeling that revo kit on the back of this group here that's got to be Danielia straight uh, she has been absolutely on the heels of DBR, representing Team Revo. She's been the one rider from Team Revo that continually has shown her talent and been able to make these front groups. Big shout out to Team Revo, showing up at the front end here. We'll see if she can make that challenge again up against that DBR and the rest of this group. Yeah, definitely. I've been uh, mightily impressed by Daniela Estrate. Of course, second in round one. Uh, over in London and second again so really really consistent of course Cecilia Hansen was both third third on two occasions I think she is in this front group as well from Sweden but she is a rider Danielle Estrada has really burst onto the scene has she got enough to take it today I think they're just easing off and just seeing here Nathan some of the powers dropping down just a little bit as the riders try and think about the latter part of this course another little bit of a rise coming up now the riders now thinking what they're going to do from a strategic perspective of course, just before the finish, well, there's only about one and a half kilometers that separate the sprint with the 10 points on offer and, of course, the finish line. And riders are going to have to make a decision, Nathan. Very, very difficult to go to both. I think they're going to have to split their attributes unless they, of course, use the sprint to actually try and break away to go for the finish. Absolutely fascinating the way that, that this particular course is laid out. It definitely is. And I have a feeling that's exactly what... Because of this chase group, I think it kind of changes things up a little bit. There's not going to be that lull. I think we are going to see a kick and then not wanting to wait up at all. There's going to be a, 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 a break and maybe three or four riders that get away because of the intensity of the kick. And then from that point forward, they're just going to try and hold on. Now, it may shoot themselves in the foot a little bit, though, because we could see some riders that upset things because there is the reality. The DBR team have shown themselves to be so exceptional, but do they really have that kind of power to get that in intermediate sprint and then continue on and hold off a charging pack with so many teams that are just looking to take down that top dominating DBR team. Exactly. Well, I think one of the riders in this front group is a Mary Wilkinson. You called her Scary Mary. She's a, a farmer by trade. She loves her sheep. She's a, a wonderful woman, but boy, can she lay the power, down the power. And if you look back at Mary Wilkinson's previous results, I think, Nathan, looking at this group, she is one of the riders that has the capabilities, the physiology to go long, take the sprint and actually hold on to the finish. One of the, of the riders in this group with that rare attribute. She's not exceptionally fast in a sprint, but she can go very, very long indeed watch out for Mary just dropping towards the back of this group now yeah Mary most definitely was right there we saw her coming through in the first intermediate sprint we definitely saw her only about a wheel length maybe a half a bike there at, at that that uh, intermediate sprint line definitely had an opportunity there to make something happen sprint is coming up as we can see in the up on the top of the screen here we've got to be within about three four hundred meters they are setting up things calming down the lull before we kick off here Smart Shepherd vision sitting there the world class mountain biker and Swift Academy find us now making her way to the front here. We'll see if she's got a little bit of a kick here. Usually the climber, but we'll see if she can set things up for a sprint here. Claudia Berry now been fairly quiet on the circuit so far. Now the opening up from DBR. A little bit up and out of the saddle there. Backing up again. Maybe expecting it a little bit too early. Now to the front again. It looks like DBR completely taking over. Not really too much of a lead out. They're kind of holding off. I think the reality here is that they're waiting because they do not want to waste too much of a kick because as you said, there is that immediate immediate uh, to the line all out race 
once they do come over that sprint here, backing off now, nobody going just yet. I think maybe a little bit anxious before we actually going to hit the sprint section in just a moment. Indeed, um, we, we call it easing off. But when you look at some of the power, they've they backed off a little bit, but still four and a half, five watts per kilo being churned out on this Gotham grind course. It really is a great race that we're having here. Difficult to call this one at the moment, but in the next couple of kilometers, we are going to know what's going to happen. Is somebody going to go long? Try and get the 10 points off. Remember, 10 points and off are down to 10th place for the intermediate sprint. Then across the line, 20 points for the winner of this race, all the way down to one point for 20th place and is powerless on the front wilkinson shadowing her and torson is just there too 2.6 k's to go but we have two finishes we've got the sprint coming up very shortly nathan and then the finish line and now I do see Mary Wilkinson making way to the front, but it's Vision taking over now in the white and black kit. Now toward the back now, it looks like Mary's been shot off to the back here after those initial takeovers. Canyon CCC kind of out of position here. We've got a breakaway burrito, interestingly, being, interestingly enough, being used. Perhaps that's because the rider did not want that power-up and he was going to be looking for maybe an arrow power-up or a feather power-up going into the final sprint. Be very lucky if you're able to grab something special right before we hit that final couple of Ks after the interview at sprint here in just a moment now now we're going to take a couple of more turns here and then we do have rachel elliott though making way to the front paulus there from 2020 continues to find herself on the front really trying to find that position never out of that top two to three Luis hubach here now 168 piece per 53 rpms you really see that rpm coming down you know that she's looking to set up well for the cinema sprint she's waiting for that burst that quick turn of speed that she's be looking for high wattage it was Thorberson there, a good little move off the front. She was, gonna, she was using the everything burrito, little breakaway, and that's Norton that's actually drifted off the front. You won't be long before we see the sprint arch and essentially 1,700 metres to go, but two finishes. We've got a ghost power up being used as well. The invisibility is being used. Fascinating running, and now we're seeing these big power spikes. Yeah, and it was a very early attack again from Thurvalson. She's got a solid two-second gap, and she was just kind of hanging out with it here. Now, all of a sudden, she still had something left. I don't think the pack expected that. Nine watts per kilogram from Thurvalson. Thurvalson just walks away with it. Everybody just watched her win that one. Nobody was able even to respond. They kind of just let her float away here. Hubach, though, with that counterattack, and look at DBR. Three on the front, over the top of this 4% uphill gradient. Shayna Paulus. Very tactical here. The 2020 rider showing that the pro riders, they still got it out on Zwift. It's not just the community teams completely taking over here. She's well positioned here. Going into the downhill now, we can see Thorvalson followed up by Barry. And it looks like Hubach and Bradbury. That was the situation between the riders here. Vision 2020, then race 3R, Revo, Roe King, Fearless, and AHDR. Coming into the final here now here, it looks like it's going to be DBR. Will there be an upset though? The 2020 looks well set up here, Matt. Who is going to take it? Well, this is going to be absolutely fascinating. Wonderful little move by Thorvalson back then. She's using the burrito to good effect. Normally, one of the power-ups that people like to leave behind. This is this little kick up. Then it drops down. This little descent into the finish line of Cat's Poor Hill is essentially a slingshot. Positioning absolutely vital here. Has anybody got any special power-ups before this little kick into the line? This is a little drop. And the, the actual finish line comes into to view very, very late indeed. But it's Wilkinson is going clear. 6.1 watts a kilo. Nathan, take a to the finish. Wilkinson with the invisibility power of 10 watts per kilogram. She hits a 3% uphill gradient, but the timing, it's all about the timing. Will she have the continuance with the speed? Louise Hubach, arrow power up being thrown down. DBR with the domination. Shane Apollos trying to follow it up from 2020, but it looks like it's going to be Hubach followed by Hanson. Hubach holding, holding all the way to the line. Louise Hubach, Hanson followed up by Daniela Estrella. Looks like Shane Apollos, big shout out to 2020. Coming across the line, looked like for maybe fourth place, looked like just a couple wheel links between the riders maybe 2020 grabbing a podium for the individual riders out here we have to wait for the results what an amazing kick to the line and dbr continue on with their domination well that was an absolutely amazing finish who back in form back to back wins and there is confirmation acres uh, nathan take us through the stats yeah and it was louise hubach with that 20 points to see the hansen 
are. And we did see a straight Daniela there able to get across the line in third place, just nipping it away from Shayna Palace 2020. Now, Mary Wilkinson, the Canyon CCC coming on through. Solid result there for her. Not able, though, to get up over the top of the DBR riders. But then it will be Vicky Nila, BRT. Consistency is the key there, definitely for BRT. Rosemary Brandary with Turbo there. Samara Shepard with Vision. Then it will be Maria Horan. And then DBR actually still with Vicky Whitelaw as well. Four of the riders in the top 10. Absolutely amazing. That's the individual results for us today. Now we are going to be heading back on over to OJ and Danny to take us through some of the some of post-race analysis as well as replays and the team results as we get the rest of the top 20. Thanks a lot, Matt. Great call-in of the races. And back to you, OJ and Danny. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Matt, as well. Fabulous race again, Danny. Fabulous race. It was. It was brutal. Fast from the start. And then I think the first sprint actually caught a lot of riders off guard. We saw that split then with the 18 riders then come into the finish. And it's the same names every week. It is DBR domination. Absolute domination. Apart from <laughs> Leah Thorvalson on that final sprint just before the finish, she caught everyone napping. That was amazing, wasn't it? Super long sprint and she got those intermediate points. But I was actually doing some research on the DBR team before today and all of them, the week before the race, will race on Zwift on the course. And I think that is what is That's absolutely very key. clever. They know how to race. They know where the standout moments are and they do it every week. Yeah, Impressive. I mean, it's about, it's about knowing the course, knowing where to go. And we see that with Hubak and Hansen that they are teaming up again. They were one, two in the last race. DBR have won all three in the team competition. We just see them every time. And in the chat, I was watching it. Lots of people were calling many names, but really it was Hubak people were talking about. And that is because she knows when to go, how to go, and how to use the power-ups as well. Exactly. And it's not just on the flat courses. We saw last week she can do it in the climbing courses and the flat courses. She's obviously got super top form and also knows power, how power, to... Power, 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 power. <laughs> power, power-ups power. and a good team as well. It is all about the team competition. Well, let's take a look at the team competition standings. Uh, we can see that DBR, again, doubling the points of the next closest team, which is Turbo and Canyon ZCC coming in with 36 points. If before the race you were going to call it, you would it would have been a safe bet to say that DBR were going to win this. Yeah, for sure. Just watching how they race as a team, I think, as well. Um, it's clear to see that they know what they're doing. They've obviously had their chats before. They might be using um, chats where they can speak in the race, where they've got, like Nathan said before, almost that team car scenario that you have in real life to talk them through the races, tell them when to go. And it's obviously working. And I don't think they need to change anything because they've mm. got it right. But maybe their opponents do need to change something. Because tactically, if you look at it, you've got 18 riders in that front group. Of that, four are from DBR. You've got three from Turbo. And it seemed like the other teams who had ones and twos in there were working for them which, yeah. which seemed crazy because realistically made them ride yeah totally if i was a team manager or rider myself if there was four dbr riders in that front group get on the front ride it yourself exactly they should have been the only ones there pushing that that group forward and the other riders should have just sat back and said no it's up to you guys you know you've obviously you know got the legs for this um but they didn't so hopefully the teams will learn something and hopefully there'll be a different winner next time. And here is the replay of the finish. We can see here, everybody dropping their parrots as we head into the last few hundred meters. The aero helmet, if you called before, we see the, uh, the, the, the burrito power-ups. But again, it's all about timing. The little kick before the end, hit the power straight over the top. Super, super impressive. And like I said before, the aero power-up really is the one that you wanted to use at the end of this course today. So they all had that, the DBR team. They'd waited, they'd saved that aero power-up, and they won again. I'm just having a look at some of the things that happened in chat right now. Lots of people really enjoyed the race. Thank you for all your comments. Um, somebody just said, I want to have what you have for breakfast, Nathan. That enthusiasm <laughs> is crazy. I agree. Uh, again, thank you very much to everyone who got involved with the chat. Thank you very much for watching. Um, it has just been another fabulous race. And for me, that sort of course, that's more me. With the little rolling bits, <laughs> no massive climbs. Yeah, me too, actually. And I thought it was really interesting what Matt Stevens says about that course. Although it's flat, it is really rolling, undulating. So there's no real chances to recover properly. So it is actually up my street too. Should we race? We're going to race it. Now, I can't do tomorrow because my legs still hurt from Bologna, <laughs> which I did yesterday. Uh, Thursday? 
Yep, I Thursday? can do Thursday. All right, all I'll right. I'll be there. Uh, stage five on New York kicks off in a matter of hours, starting at 8 a.m. GMT or midnight Pacific Standard Time. If you want to find what rides and what time they are, Zwift.com forward slash TDZ ride. You can see the event schedule. Choose an event that works for you time-wise or check out the Zwift Companion mobile app. You can also follow myself and Danny if you do want to see us race. And please do race along at the same time. It is. It's all about the competition for me. I love it. And she's still competitive. I'm very she's competitive. She's never given it up. <laughs> no even way. with her husband on a Swift <laughs> race. Filming. Poor Matt. Um, listen, it's been great. Thank you so much for being part with us on this one. Uh, next time out, we're going to be in Richmond. So join us for the lowdown on stage six. We'll have the men back to show us how it's done. That is going to be Friday, 31st of January. End of this week, 7 p.m. GMT, 11 a.m. PST for the next one. Um, and looking at that Richmond course, that has got a bit of climbing. That's going to be an exciting course. Probably breakaways, would you think? It is. It is actually almost like a classics course and one I've actually ridden in real life as well. I actually rode the World Time Trial Champs in Richmond and I love that climb. It's got a bit of cobbles in it um, and it's one for the powerful riders. One, two minute climbs. I love it. I love it too. But New York is where we're going next. Just to let you know, I'm going to do it in a full skin suit and aero helmet. Nice. I'm not I'm even not. joking. <laughs> I'm absolutely going to do it. Uh, Danny, it's been great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll see you on Friday. Goodbye.